Hey everybody, it's Ricardo. We're here at PAX East, and I'm here with Mike and Jerry, and we're hanging out. And you guys have a ton of sessions. You guys did one today, guys yep. two today. Yeah, well, we did Q&A. Yep. Um, and then, I mean, essentially the way it works out each day is that we have at least one panel. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow, so Saturday's panel is, you know, traditionally um, a strip creation panel. Mm -hmm. And then we have one more panel on Sunday that's followed, and then that's followed by a closing ceremony. So it's usually typically four of those. And then this show is actually kind of nice because we get to move around and, and actually try to experience much more of the show than we usually get to. Yeah, I was going to ask how these work for you guys because you tend to just get in here and you're just constantly in motion. Do you get a chance to enjoy them? Uh, this year, our schedule is pretty light, actually. Um, so we've, we have actually a lot of opportunity over the next couple days to see the show, which I'm excited for. Now, you guys changed venue, because yep. I think you learned that there is a very high demand for packs in all kinds of places. Yeah, we couldn't have known. I mean, we uh, we looked at this convention space and the Heinz, and we went with the Heinz last year just because there was no way to guess mm -hmm. really what the, the turnout would be. So now we know we're in but, the right place. I mean, every, every year the show, I mean, for the last few years, every year it, it sells I mean, we, we're sold, like, up to fire code. We've sold every ticket. Every person who can be in here is here. Now, in terms of what's going on here, what are you guys excited about? I obviously um, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the uh, the exhibition room is has a lot of really neat stuff in it this year. and But it's also sort of situated down. Like, it's down a floor from the main level. So you can, you can sort of see more of it. Like, when you start going down the stairs, um, or the escalator, like you're sort of going down into this realm because at the beginning you can see all the stuff and then you get down in it and you realize how just how big it is. It's hard to tell from outside that room, but there's a lot going on in there. And then the tabletop, the tabletop section is gigantic. Like yeah. it's it's far, far beyond what we've been able to accomplish in any other show. Now let's talk games for a little bit. What are you guys playing now? Uh, let's see. Right now I am playing a lot of Battle Heart, mm -hmm. Pokemon. A little bit of World of Warcraft, not as much as I used to. I sort of realized that I'd that I'd been keeping the deck clear for Dragon Age. Mm -hmm. and for the last couple of weeks, I really haven't played anything seriously uh, aside from like iPhone games. Like there's a couple um, collectible card games I play on there. Some really silly stuff like Star Dunk, Tiny Wings. So what's it like for you now to kind of manage being a gamer and a parent? It's great. He plays Pokemon a little bit. The big thing for him is Minecraft. He loves Minecraft, loves all the Lego games. And the Lego games are great because they're games that, you know, are super easy to play cooperatively. I still have that parent thing where you can't help it where it's like, is he playing too much? But uh, I think that I think that I'm pretty careful about what I let him play and I do my best with how often he plays. But if he's playing Minecraft for, you know, a couple hours, to me that's different than if, you know, somebody was playing Halo for a couple hours. Like, he's in there creating, like he's in there building and making. And to me, that's a different kind of play and needs to be treated differently than another type of video game, right? In less ideal circumstances, when you do like your hobby as your job, sometimes you it then becomes the job and it's not as fun. Sometimes making a comic is very difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that doesn't, that actually happens. Yeah. You know, that is hard sometimes. But, you know, I think we realized early on that a schedule that had some breathing room in it you know, if we if we if we we'd tried to go seven days a week or five days a week, we would have quit. And, you know, there had to be enough breathing room in the schedule for us to have time to explore other outlets. And because there are two of you, what's the what works between you two? We sort of leave each other alone when we're not making comics. It's pretty rare that that we hang out outside of you know the office, really. I think that we try to minimize the opportunity to get on each other's nerves, right? If we, if all we do is see each other when we're making comics, then there's less opportunity for one of us to piss the other off, maybe. Last question, what is it about um, your fans that still surprises you? I guess that they've grown up with us, you know? I mean, the comic has really changed a lot since 1999. We're in our mid-30s, and what surprises me is that we have other people who are now in their mid-30s, and they have kids, and they're still reading the comic. But then we also have 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds that come up and are reading the comic. Like, that really surprises me that, th that we've been able to maintain that kind of audience. We had a guy at the QA today who was um, 11 when he started reading it. And it was like, I mean, that's, that, that's surprising, first of all, 
just because that's a long time to like something. But second of all, it was surprising because I think we forget sometimes how long we've been doing it. It doesn't feel very long. That's, that's hard to get your head around. All right, well, thanks a lot for the time, guys. And there you go, just checking in with Mike and Jerry from PAX.